Hi-yo, it's me, Ayo, the Popcorn Philosopher. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome, fellow aliens and fellow philosophers. It's me, a chicken. A Muppet Chicken. <laughs> Where am I? When am I? Who am I? Yes, if you can't hear in the background, I'm feeding the chickens right now. <laughs> I'm at my best friend's house. I'm back in California. I'll tell you about it in the next video. Yeah, she has some chickens. I can't see them, so let me just show you. <laughs> I'm just feeding them. She has about six chickens. Can you see them? Yeah, anyways, welcome to Rockstar Recipes Musical Mukbang, Tori Amos edition. Today we're going to be cooking Mushroom Magic, which is a recipe that Tori Amos created, and it was on NPR. I'll leave it linked below, but you'll see it right here. It was an article where she talked about cooking during the worldwide panini, and apparently she created this mushroom stew, and so today I am going to make it. After I cook it, we'll have a little listening party while I try it. And we're gonna do things a little differently this time. We're gonna listen to a new Tori song first, Spies, from her 2021 album Oceans to Oceans, a rare b-side called Frog on My Toe from the Boys for Pele period, and Oil Spill, which is a parody of Tori Amos from Bob's Burgers. All first time reactions. I have done other episodes of Musical Mukbang. I've done Madonna and Prince. I'll leave those videos linked below if you wanna watch them. But as you can see, I am in a completely different place. It's kind of more country out here, but believe it or not, I actually used to have chickens myself when I was a little kid. So this is kind of bringing back a lot of memories. Memories. May have been beautiful and now they flop down to my navel and look like udders on a cow. Not all good memories, of course, because when I was a kid, I was the one who had to clean up after the chickens and we had the most horrible chicken coop in the world. It basically trapped all the chickens together and they just pooped everywhere. So it was like a chicken poop coop, a poop coop, a poopy coopy. <laughs> I don't know. It was bad. I had to clean it all up and it was disgusting. And it used to make me so mad. Oh my god, because I was the only one. This was, at the time I was the only kid in the house, so it was only me. But one good thing about having chickens is because I lived in a city and having chickens was not at all common in a city. It was a good lure, basically. <laughs> now, I had horrible social anxiety ever since I was a little kid. But I knew if I brought my chicken, a chicken out with me, she used to let me carry her around. I knew if I took one with me while the other kids were playing, I knew that I could lure them into me, <laughs> which is what I did. And I ended up making so many friends that way in the end. Actually, that was like one of the happiest times in my life because we had this huge yard and there was like these canals in the backyard that I could just ride my bike around. And there was tons of really nice kids and we lived in a small little cottage. It was very tiny, but I didn't even re realize how tiny it was. That's how like happy I was at the time. But we only got to live there for a couple years. I wish we could have just like lived there the whole time. Anyway, I don't know why I'm getting into all of that. <laughs> so let's start by making Tori Amos's recipe, Mushroom Magic, and see if it's good or not. If she's good recipe creator, we shall see. <laughs> At least it's vegetarian and not chicken soup. Ah! <laughs> They're giving me the evil eye. <laughs> let's make some mushroom magics. How about that, ladies? Yeah, let's make some mushroom magic. So here's the recipe for Tori's stew. It's a lot of steps. Hopefully it'll be worth it. Anyway, I will leave a link to the article with the recipe, but until then, let's start with, funnily enough, the mushrooms. Okay, so I chopped up these mushrooms, I guess in threes. It didn't really say how much, but I'm gonna dredge them in this pancake batter. I didn't have flour. I've done it for fried chicken before, and it's actually really good. Little trick from you to me, if you don't have flour, use pancake batter, it's actually delicious. Okay, so I ended up making three plates, as you can see, of dredged mushrooms. Olive oil, 
says two teaspoons of olive oil. Now we're going to stick these in the pan. Now I'm turning the mushrooms over because I'm supposed to turn them when they are golden brown. It's a little smoky in here. But rather than have you stumble onto it and make another mistake, I'll tell you. But those are the mushrooms all done. La la la. Got my, turn my trusty slow cooker on. So we're gonna put some six cups of potatoes in there. Okay, so this is a homemade broth that I actually made with the Instapot. It is so easy. You basically just keep all the extra vegetables. If you keep all of them together, and um, just keep them in the freezer until you're ready to use them, then you can make your own vegetable broth really easily. And that's what I did here. So I'm adding that. It says to add about two cups. It says to add the carrots and the parsnips. The lid on. It says to put the lid on. Okay, in another bowl it says two tablespoons of tamari. One tablespoon of balsamic glaze. Three tablespoons of tomato puree. Okay, now mix that together. Okay, so next thing we're gonna do is deglaze this pan. I think so. Just deglaze the pan. Get all the little brown bits up. This is from the mushroom, all that mushroom and flour stuff that was in the pan. This is to add the tamari balsamic glaze mixture to the pan and all that the glazing and stuff to the crock pot or into pot whatever you have all these mushrooms in there as well it says onion with salt and pepper okay i forgot to film it but you put in the onions and the celery mixture back into the crock pot or insta pots whatever you have and then deglaze the pan again Left, left of your broth. It should be six cups all together. Pour the rest in here. Wow, this makes a lot of, <laughs> this makes a lot of stew. It like is absolutely at the absolute maximum. But I guess, I guess that's good, right? <laughs> Four sprigs of thyme. Stir it all. I mean, it's literally at the very, very tippy top. So now just let it go and let it wait. See what happens. All right, so here it is, the end result. But I don't think you need as many steps as it calls for. Like you definitely do not need to bread the mushrooms and fry them. It all came off in the end anyway. And I still had to thicken it at the end in order to get it a little bit thicker. So there's really no point in doing that. <laughs> Save yourself some dishes and some time. You do not need to do that. Okay, moment of truth. Is Tori Amos as good a recipe creator as she is a musician or a songwriter or whatever? Well, one way to find out. <laughs> I'm a mess. Good heavens. Okay, let me do that again. <laughs> mm. It actually is good. I'm glad I thickened it. It was a little thin when I first had it, which means you definitely do not need to bread the mushrooms because all the breading came off anyway in the soup. That's one too many steps. Save yourself some dishes, trust me. And there are a few other things that I will list down in the description box, but it's, it's good. And I also had it with some Brazilian cheese bread, which is something my grandma used to make me when I was a little kid. Anyway, let's listen to some Tori Amos music. Actually, you know, the more I eat the soup, the more I actually kind of like it because it's got like all these different like textures and flavors in it from all the different ingredients, different notes. Yes, you can. Yes, you can, Madonna. Tori Amos, good recipe creator. Who knew? Anyway, let's listen to our first song, Spies. We're actually gonna listen to something a little different. We're gonna listen to something new, something rare and a parody of some kind, which I'll explain that a little bit later. 
But basically, we're going to listen to the new song first, which is Spies. It comes from her 2021 album, Oceans to Oceans. <laughs> I just got my headphones in my soup. Okay. Yeah, so we're going to listen to Spies first. So get out your spy gadgets. I was given specific instructions by Elaine to tailor these gadgets to you. <gasps> these are not yours. Oh. This oh. antifungal spray can freeze and disable. Nice. Each of these are filled with chloroform. Wow, that is an unsettling amount of hemorrhoid wipes. It makes me kind of wonder what exactly is going on back there. I wouldn't know. I don't have that problem. I don't have that problem. And nor do I either. <laughs> anyway, let's just listen to this live. Another very Tory lyric. <laughs> wow, this is this is really good. I was not expecting this at all. I'm glad that this is a good new Tory song because sometimes her newer stuff could be a little hit and miss for me. Although I did really like Unrepentant Geraldine's. That was actually a pretty good album. I think that's as strong as say like uh, Scarlet's Walk maybe. You know, kind of that mid-high Tory uh, output. This is interesting because there's, she's not really playing piano, which is very rare for, for for a Tory song. The lyrics are very obtuse, which is pretty typical, but I think maybe if I look into them a little bit, maybe I might get a little better clue as to what she's referring to. But lots of aardvarks and hippopotamuses, which is very much in line with Tori Amos's lyrics. But it's interesting also li listening to her music and eating stuff that she Created. It's like I'm having a, a full Tory experience. <laughs>
That's it? Wow. Okay. I liked it. I really liked it. I'm so happy that that was good and not a weaker track of hers. And we've got a lot of really interesting polyrhythmic drumming in there. And it went very well with the bass. I really feel like that song was a more rhythmic type of song. Whoever was playing on the bass was really cooking at one point. <laughs> you know, that rhythm section was really tight. And even for a song that was that rhythmic, it was very melodic. But, but the chorus was interesting, you know, because she really just goes, Spice, get you warm. It's, it's kind of an easy chorus to sing, but it, it still is very melodic anyway. Anyway, since we're hearing all these uh, Mr. Hippopotamus and aardvarks and stuff like that. Let's keep in that theme and listen to Frog on My Toe. I was going to do a completely different song, but I wanted to hear something from the Boys for Pele period anyway, because that's my favorite album of Tori's. So let's listen to Frog on My Toe. <laughs> keep in the theme. Just looking, make sure. There's no frog on my toe, but there is a frog on Tori's toe, apparently. One note. One sustained note. A chord. Oh, I wasn't expecting it to be like this. different than I was expecting. I was expecting something a little more whimsical, a little more like Hello Mr. Zebra or something like that. This is like really uh, more of a beautiful song. The chord progression is really interesting and really pretty. Totally unexpected. Raw, make you haughty, make you strong, little girl. You paint them toes, the reddish color, and you Oh, one day you're gonna be bigger than a flea You're gonna be bigger than that old poison ivy tree It's almost like a country song almost too Now I'm pretty sure that I think you come and visit and talk Sometimes kind of like Gidget and a funny little chance like an Indian bribe. You said we all grew fat when the white men came, but one day, Ew. girl, you get to learn to make them crawl, make them grow tall, but have the grace. And you fry them taters and you make them with ladies' hands and
that's all. Interesting. That was like not what I was that's expecting at all. It's almost like it, you know, has a lot of country type of lingo, like taters. And I really want to see what the lyrics are about because I'm very, very curious about it. So let's look at the lyrics. Often in Tori's lyrics, there can be specific memories that we may not be privy to, and they're very specific to her. But what's so great about them is they're always so beautifully described that even though we may not know directly what they mean, they can also be up for an interpretation. It's kind of like a, one of those ink block tests. Just the title, Frog on My Toe, is so whimsical. And she's kind of speaking like maybe her father spoke to her when he read her stories as a kid. It's pretty clear that her father must have passed away shortly before she wrote this because she says, Papa, I'm sure the worms have eaten you now and Jethro's been on some Frenchie's plate long ago. This is definitely referring to the death of her father, but I also think it's referring to the death of her innocence and the death of childish things, even though I think that keeping a bit of innocence is really important. But I kind of think that's what she's grappling with here. All of the things her father has told her over the years of what an adult should be, and especially what a woman should be. The wonderful stuff, as well as the stuff that may have made her feel smaller growing up as a girl. The way it can be stifling growing up in a patriarchal society. One of my favorite lines is, you paint your toes the reddest color, and you know one day you're going to be bigger than a flea. You're going to be bigger than that old poison ivy tree. It paints such a vivid picture and it's interesting that she uses poison ivy tree. What do you think that Tori means by that? The last thing we're going to listen to is, or we'll watch and listen, is a parody from Bob's Burgers. And I heard about it in an interview with Tori Amos in this clip here. You recently were asked about Bob's Burgers, which is a TV show, if you guys don't know, and they did a loving parody of you, I guess. There's a woman <laughs> named Tabitha Johansson who plays at this Lollapalooza-like festival. And she's playing a song called Oil Spill. And they asked you if you'd seen it, and you said no. I hadn't seen it. But you told me before we started that you have seen it since then. It's been played for me <laughs> now. I've actually not seen very much of Bob's Burgers, but I did have, at one point, had the first, very first season, but that's the only Bob's Burgers I've seen is the first season. It was on for years. I don't know if it is it still on? I don't even know. And looking at this up, I did see that the person who voiced this is Megan Mullally. I was like, wow, really? <laughs> Megan Will and Grace Mullally? Megan Karen Walker Mullally? We love Karen Walker on this channel. Why doesn't somebody just pee directly on me? <laughs> well, Karen, from what I've heard, you can probably charge extra for that. Anyway, let's listen to oil spills from Bob's Burgers. So I've known about this for probably a few months and I really wanted to watch it, but I didn't want to do it without watching it with you, so. Lala Pafudza? Isn't it funny how much more I know than you? No. I think it's embarrassing. I don't even know these characters, really, anyway, except for Bob. Anyway, everyone gets drunk and spends lots of money, and this year Tabitha Johansson is headlining the concert. Tabitha who? Tabitha Johansson. The sexy pianist? She sings that song about oil spills, but you know she's talking about her vagina. Jane, uh, how do you know that? It's not subtle. It really isn't. Oh my god. <laughs> Ugh, you were right. It's not subtle. See? Oh my god. All right, well that was amazing. <laughs> amazing, but you know what? I also have kind of mixed feelings about it too because this is making fun of, of something that was kind of a misconception about Tori Amos for a very, very long time. 
that she would, while she was playing piano, she would basically mount the bench and basically ride it. <laughs> Let's just say ride it. Good heavens. Uh, <laughs> yeah, this is something that was definitely a misconception because she really only did it maybe a few times, at least that I, I know of. And I think this is making fun of a, a specific performance that she did, which is really interesting that they thought that people would know enough about Tori Amos to know about this performance. And even in the performance, I'm pretty sure it was pretty subtle. I, pre I believe it was like on some late night show, like maybe like David Letterman or something like that, or one of those shows. If, it's, if I'm not mistaken, I think it was her singing Icicle. If I can find it, I will play it here. <laughs> to see her quite a lot when I was a kid and pretty much most of the performances I really never ever saw her riding the piano bench like she does there and it's funny because they said it was very obvious but when I first heard Icicle I didn't know what the song was about <laughs> so I guess it wasn't so obvious for me maybe I'm a little slow <laughs> But overall, I thought it I thought it was very funny. But I could tell when in that interview that she thought it was funny, but she also was a little bit I don't offended is not the right word, but I could, you could tell maybe she was a little sensitive about it. I don't know. What did you think when you saw it? Well, I I la I thought it was funny. Yes, I thought it was funny. Do you think Tori from 1996 would think it was funny? No. And let me talk to me about that because I also think that there is. They, the creator was saying that they weren't making fun of you, they were, there was loving, all those things. But I think in the mid 90s when you were releasing Pele, when you were constantly called like the kooky chick, mm -hmm. and there was just sort of some of this, not some, there was misogyny embedded in a lot of this. People didn't know what to do with you or the vulnerability or that raw honesty that you had. So talk to me about what you think in 1996 you would have thought if you had seen that. Well, I'm gonna, if I can borrow his quote for a minute, mm -hmm. I would have felt like a punching bag mm, mm -hmm. in 96. When you don't know how to detach, when you haven't really done all that therapy, yep. <laughs> and I did later, right? which is the reason you can laugh at oil spill. Yes. It's because you get to a place where, where you can. Mm -hmm. But there are times when artists can feel under attack. They asked her if she would ever sing it in concert, and I don't think we'll ever see that. Will you play oil spill? I, I would dare you to play it on the tour. Do you dare me? I dare you. Well, I like a dare. Okay, so let's see what happens. Oh, we'll see what happens. But if she was smart, she probably would do it. She probably would sing it in concert. I thought it was amazing. I'm surprised that it even exists because I feel like, do enough people know about that one performance to know? Although maybe that was just uh, kind of like a, something well known about Tori Amos for a long time that maybe she wrote, she rides the piano bench when she plays um, in a, shall we say, sexual manner. <laughs> and, but like I said, it wasn't that common, at least not in the performances that I've seen. Let me know if you have seen her play live and you happen to witness her doing this. Okay, well that was so much fun. I'm so glad we got to do that both the stew and our little listening party. I'm glad that you came by. Please like, subscribe, and of course, share, 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 share. <laughs> and it does help the channel out a lot. I'm trying to make this my full-time gig. As I've said in other videos, help a girl out, basically. <laughs> anyway, I hope you have a wonderful rest of the day. I hope that your life is a wonderful, beautiful musical. And I hope that I see you next time. Popcorn Philosopher, over and out.